Greetings, programs. I'm back. I'd like to introduce to you today Red Pill Sunday School Season 2, starting soon. Now, the question I have for you folks is, do you want to know the truth? I think that most of you don't. But I'm going to tell you right now that if you continue to listen to this show, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to hear. Not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. The truth. I'm not going to give you villains. I'm not going to give you things that you can blame for your own problems. I'm going to simply tell you that you and you alone are the source of all your own problems. You can blame any ethnical group you want. You can blame any family. You can blame any popular name you want. Any corporatist, any corporation, any nation, any country. Even the unlawful ones. But... Ultimately, the source of all delusion is you. If you don't want to hear that, if you don't want to know that, well, then this is not the show for you. Kindly move on. I'll wait. For those that might be intrigued by such a notion that all of your own problems stem from yourself, that everything that seems to be happening to you from an exterior source can only happen because you allow it, because you volunteer for it. Make no mistake, we live in a voluntary society. And what that really means, the term volunteerism, is actually another word for the doctrine of master and servant. In other words, principal and agent, employer and employee, trustor and trustee, and on and on. Before you can understand who your enemy is, you must look within. You must look at your own reflection. You must see that you are the source of all power. And you must also understand that you are part of the problem. Whenever that pyramid is shown to you, where you seem to be on the bottom of the pyramid and As you go up, you find the all-seeing eye and the power structure and the corporations and the kings and queens and the governments. Well, you're not at the bottom of that pyramid. You're somewhere in the middle because below you, you see, on that pyramid of power, which shows the power structure, you're actually pretty high up as debt slaves, as citizens of nations. You're actually pretty high up there because under you, consider... For a moment, what is under you? How about nature itself, all the animals, the animal kingdom, the biosphere, everything that you pollute, or you allow to be polluted, everything that you sport hunt? How about the aboriginal people? How about the actual slaves? And yes, there are plenty of those today. Black-on-black slavery in Africa is still very much a thing. You've got all of these things under you in this pyramid. And you need to realize that while there are certainly things that are more powerful than you in this status. And if you don't understand that, well, let me introduce you to Robert Foster and Juice Media. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations. A new world order. This evening on Juice Media, we're diving deeper than ever previously, leaving aside greetings and pleasantries and leaping in. And it's time to seek the true root cause of the world's miseries. As we've seen, we can't believe in the mainstream frequencies. Therefore, in order to more fully understand, we're forced to turn to alternative sources on other bands. But what's causing all of this flagrant impropriety? Is it the case that we simply lost our way on the high seas? Or is there in fact some mysterious plan at play behind the scenes? To probe even deeper, we call in another truth seeker's opinion. Are you online? Terence Moosey? Is Obama Kenyan? Listen, Russell Brand's a minion, only giving you half the picture. He won't mention the secret force that keeps the poor poor and the rich richer. What is it? I'll show you, slaves. Prepare to have your minds blown. But first I need you all to focus. Get your third eyes open. Turn off your TVs, your NSA devices disguised as iPhones. This is the most critical message you ever hear in your lives, yo. It's a massive conspiracy. We are shackled up under its weight, but I'm here to brush away the dust and expose its structure. You have to listen in. This is the symbol of tyranny. Since ancient Egypt, they haven't hidden it. Witnesses fearful symmetry in the ubiquity. The shape of the pyramid! Who stands above the
the military, royalty, and above celebrities. They do. Who directs the press, the Fed, and the universities? They do. Who operates above the law and courts, causes war for sports, and forcefully contorts the results of all elections before the voting call? They do. Hang on, Terrence. Who are they? It's blatant. Prep your brains as I unveil this. The architects and agents of the Matrix. The New World Order. They rule straight from the apex. While we, the victims, are kept restrained at the base in cages. So what can we do? We galley slaves have to mutiny. We have to expose the truth of this huge pyramid scheme of oppression and usury. Those at the top are cowards. They fear public scrutiny. Yeah, you heard me. Show yourselves, Illuminati. End this lunacy. Check it. I represent the New World Order, the banks, the government, Monsanto, Katy Perry music videos, Super Bowl halftime shows, all of these things implausibly tied together into one theory. I'm a builder, boo! This world is like a video game I maintain when I lead the New World Order control your life here in the dark No, I am F high equity I grab my pen and sign them checks Uh, then I sidestep with high death flex You are optimistic, now you're f***ing depressed You're just like the rest, I'm the NWO Totally unknown, you can't f*** with my huge bankroll I'm hard to glimpse, you can't do this, you can't do that yep. Who said so? I do what I like, too big to fail Too much gold to hold, you can't f*** with the chosen one I, 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 I own your life, I'm Bill DeBerg William DeBerg That's right kids, or Bill if you prefer, I heard someone call for me, so I'm here to converse. I was right! I told you all! They exist! I can finally tell the world! So, the New World Order, can you confirm or deny it? Both. Both. Yeah, see things in life are seldom black or white, left or right. If I might be direct and forthright, please, that's what we like. Trust me, you're not gonna like it. I'm about to reveal a conspiracy so vast and silent that those within it can barely recognize it. The bling through is deep in the latter part of last century. As you finally emerge from your ignorance. You gradually begin to realize your legacy, your true role in history, but couldn't deal with the reality. So to retain a sense of self and innocence, your inner psyche conceived an alter ego of pure evilness, which you could blame and ascribe with the most heinous crimes that gave rise to your current way of life. So the new world order doesn't actually exist? Oh, it exists, and how? Ask the slaves whose labor built the White House. Ask the slaves of the day, tied down to sweatshops and brothels to escape hunger. Ask most women, second class citizens, in a pervasive rape culture. Ask the non-human creatures who inhabit the planet. Whales, bears, frogs, tuna, bees, slaughtered farm animals. Ask the natives of the Americas and Australia, on whose land you live today, on whose graves your factories, farms and neighborhoods stand. Ask any of them this. Ask them if the new world order is true. They'll tell you plainly. The new New world order is you. What can we do? It's simple. Topple the tyrannous by bringing down the elite dwelling at the very top of the pyramid. You can attempt it, but this structure is your own edifice. Far greater in scale and stature than you care to know or admit it is. It extends down. As you can see in this picture I've corrected to include all those beneath you on which your privilege has depended. Impossible. We are victims. I'm a victim of the freaking system. And that, kiddies, is how the pyramid ensures its existence. Through our failures to envision our position within it. Welcome Welcome to the New World Order, bitches. I hope I've been of assistance. I, 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 I need an alibi. I need a projection to sanitize my life. I, 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 you are my alibi. I need a projection, need a projection. Well, truth seekers, it's time to close this episode. Over the course of our lives, as we seek to explain the state of the world, we pass through states of enlightenment that expose the unknown. But the deeper we go, the more our quest seems to lead closer to home. Yes, injustice is real and undeniably abundant. Conspiracies, false flags, oppression, bribery, corruption. But can we fight injustice with any depth of purpose if we ignore our own roles in causing it in the first place? For the target of our struggle is never merely the tyrant on high, but also that piece of the oppressor planted deep inside, inside every one of us. And that's where the revolution first must arise. Till next time, Robert Foster, The Internet. Good night. Now, if that didn't make it clear for you, let me explain what my personal journey has been. After, oh, I don't know, well, 20 years since 9-11 I've been doing this. Uh, you know, I, I gotta say that really my personal journey in all this was discovery, of course, like everyone else. Getting into all these alternative, uh, your Alex Jones gatekeeper type of situation, whichever gatekeeper you're attracted to. And eventually, coming full circle after so much study and so much revelation and so much uncovering of things, just one big full revelation to the point where I came back to myself. 
It just all comes back on me. And I realized that after all of this, after looking for someone to blame, the only person I could blame was me. And I say person because that's exactly what I've been acting as, a person. I'm not acting as myself. I'm acting as a puppet. I'm allowing myself to be used. Another word for used is employed. I'm allowing myself to be the puppet of these people that we try to expose as the bad guys. But in truth, we're the bad guys. Who who do you think it is that's doing all the bad things? Who works in the slaughterhouses? Who works spraying Monsanto chemicals on all the fields? Who is growing all the soybeans and GMO foods? Who is doing all these things? Who's working in the labs? Who's... Brilliance do you think these people rely on? Because they certainly can't do shit by themselves. They need us. They need volunteers. They need persons. Now I could sit here and I could read all the passages out of the Bible that says do not act or respect persons. But we'll do that some other time. The, The point here is that if you don't want to know what the problem is, if you don't want to know the truth about your own participation in this system, as Robert Foster so brilliantly did in that little video, rap news, (laughs) I don't think this is the place that you're going to want to be. If you want to learn about yourself, if you want to finally look at yourself as the problem, then yeah, you might be in the right place. Otherwise, again, this, this probably isn't for you. Because I guarantee you that the only awakening, the only spiritual awakening that you're going to have in life is self-responsibility, self-awareness. That's it. That's the only thing that's ever going to be real. All these other things that these gurus and religions offer, they're crap. You want to enter into a paperwork war for the rest of your life? Well, then there's all kinds of so-called legal expert gurus out there that can sell you their paperwork. I'm not going to do that. So if you still feel the desire to listen to what I have to say over the next series of shows, in my books, on my blog, and in my documentaries, well, then stay tuned. Bear with me. Because I can't stress enough that the war is between you and your ego. Your alter ego, your persona, the character you pretend to play, the puppet that you allow yourselves to be controlled. They aren't the problem, they're playing their part. You are the problem. Now, on this short episode today, we're just going to talk about the format of the show, what you can expect. I won't give you the subject matter per se, but what I do want you to do is start thinking if you want to be one of my guests. It's right, you. Do you want to be on the show? Because you know what? I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of interviewing these people who claim to be experts who claim to be economists, who claim to be this, or doctors of that, or masters or experts at this, they're all full of shit. Kings of upper butt crack. Masters of chaos theory. I'm sorry. I've done that. I've been there. You've been there. You hear it all the time. Isn't it time to move on? Isn't it time to just talk amongst ourselves? Isn't that what even the Bible says to do? Isn't that what we should be doing? Should we not become a family before we try to battle the most powerful families in the world that are organized into nations and corporations? Because after all, that is what the war we're talking about here is. And yes, we are at war. We're at war with ourselves because we believe in corporations. We believe corporations are persons and the persons are real. We believe that persons are equal to men. They are not. They are fiction. This is the war we are in. It is not a war against nature. 
It is a war against our own perception of reality. What is reality? Truth. What is truth? Nature. What is nature? God. It's one circular reasoning that cannot be broken. I don't mean circular reasoning in a bad way. I mean once you get into an understanding of what truth is and that truth is never man-made, well then that circle can't be broken. And if you are part of that chain of understanding and truth, well then we cannot be broken. And more importantly, as a Bible reading people, we cannot either remain in the system or be enslaved. One cannot escape the matrix on his own. One has to be pulled out. And if you think about the metaphor there, what is it that pulls you out of the matrix? Well, it's the law of nature, reality, truth. You wake up and suddenly you're no longer in simulation. And that's going to be one of the biggest subjects we talk about is what is simulation? Only together can we pull each other out of the simulation. Simulation is probably one of the most important words that you can understand, and trust me when I say it is not what you think. Isn't it time to talk about truth? About reality? About something other than the fiction, the construct? All this artificialness around us? Why are we defining it? Why are we constantly talking about something that isn't real? When all of nature is waiting for us, what does the Bible say? It says the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, guess what, folks? That means the spiritually prepared. That's the translation, loosely, of what the meek is. How are we to become prepared spiritually if, one, we don't know what the word spiritual really even means, our spirit has been tied up in the system? How are we to understand and be spiritually prepared for nature, for its law, for living outside of this matrix system of legal hell, if we are not talking truth, if we are not talking to each other, if we are not answering each other's questions, if we are not sharing our, our experiences until the point where we actually have a preparedness, a spiritual preparedness. Now, I know there's preppers out there. I get it. You think your guns are the answer. You think that. No, no, no. That It doesn't say the, the well-armed will inherit the earth. The well-armed will be destroyed. All right? Your arms have to be spiritually driven. And that's why I want you, whoever you are, to bring whatever you have to the table. Do you have questions? Great. Bring your questions. Do you want to challenge me? Do you hate me? Are you a contrarian? Do you want to debate? Well, I can't promise you I'll debate you, but I will certainly address your points in the most reasonable way I can with the knowledge I've assumed. And I'll tell you what, I'll make you this promise. If I can't answer your question, or I can't challenge your thought process, I'll take some time and I'll answer it on the next show. I'll even invite you back if you disagree with my answer and you can debate me further. You see, I want us to start talking to each other. I don't want to listen to these people anymore who've done nothing, who've exposed everything but done nothing about it. The news, all of these different outlets, it's exposure without consequence. There's no point. Because here's why, folks, and this is really important. The problem with the legal system is that crime is lawful. Organized crime is what the legal system is. Everything they do is legal. Everything. That's why it is against the law of nature. And that's why the Bible is strictly 100% in every way possible against legal law or man-made law, the law of corporations and persons. There is no exception. The fact that we are and respect and believe in these persons, that is corporations, including nations, municipal corporations, which are cities, towns, 
counties, states. The nation is a municipal corporation in Washington, D.C. The fact that we give these things credit as being legitimate governments instead of just illegitimate corporations set up to control a bunch of completely illiterate people that we have been made into... The fact that we ignore that, the fact that we allow it to continue is our problem. It is not their problem, it is our problem, because we're the ones giving them substance. They are form without substance, but we believe they are something else. We believe they are part of truth, part of reality, they are not. And that is where the spiritual battle lies. The spiritual war that we are in is against, again, principalities, corporations. Why do we allow them to do what they do? Well, it's exactly why the Bible says do not take any other doctrine, any other law before the Bible, before the law of nature. Why? Because corporations are not real. They're not part of nature, so they're not under the law of nature. They're under the law of man, and the law of man allows them to do anything, any action, any act with permission against nature, against you and me who are part of nature. That is our war. That is our battle. That's where we stand, and it's all part of our belief system. The second that you stop believing that these things are equal, that they have power, that they have rights, that they can just do whatever the fuck they want to do, well, guess what? That's the point where you start the battle. But see, you haven't started the battle. You are being defeated before you even wake up in the morning. You're defeated as you go to work and contribute to building this artificial system. You are defeated every time you go to a medical institution and get harmed instead of healed. You're defeated in every possible way. From the food you eat to the water you drink, you are defeated. Why? Because we allow municipal corporations and for-profit and non-profit corporations to rule the world. As if they are men. As if they are gods. This is the war I speak of. Now, some of you might know I've been in this for quite some time, and I recently reached out to folks to help fund a laptop computer so that I could write a new book proposal. Now, I'm coming to the end of that book proposal, ready to actually issue it, and so today I'm asking once again for a little bit of help. Now, put your wallets away. I don't want your money. You know, I don't like to mix business with knowledge. You know, everything I do is always free. I have avoided social media like the plague. I don't like it. I don't want to be a part of it necessarily. However, I am in a position where I need to show that I have a social media presence. Now, as much as I don't like it, I'm going to ask you guys for a favor. I'm going to ask that if you're already in social media, you simply subscribe to my new Facebook, my new Twitter, and to this YouTube channel where all of these new Red Pill Sunday School shows will be posted. I will not monetize these in any way. They're strictly a way to show that I still have an audience out there, that people still are following me, and for the book proposal itself, a way to show that people are actually interested and would actually purchase a book. And as much as I despise the notion of going mainstream, there really is no alternative movement left. It's been co-opted, constructed into something completely different than what it was when I began. In translation, there is a lot of bullshit being flung around out there. There is controlled opposition and psychological operations placed into every nook and cranny of the internet. And honestly, what do you expect? After all, if you control your opposition, then you have none in reality. You pretend. That's the way it's been done for thousands of years. So what 
would you expect? I mean, after all, it's the same freaking families still in control to this day. Their methods don't change because they've worked for centuries. Controlled opposition is one of the subjects we'll probably touch on in the very beginning here, probably in our first opening show. And so, again, I simply need your help. Take a quick moment to subscribe to my Twitter, to my Facebook, and to this YouTube account, simply to show that I have followers. Again, my promise to you is never to monetize these things, to keep them always free, and to continue doing radio the, the, <laughs> the best way I can, which is independently, free from all the censorship and gatekeepers and everything else that we're up against on a constant basis. Now, please understand, folks, I've been censored, I've been blackballed, my websites have been hacked, I've been fired from a radio station because the ADL personally called to get me fired, or, or perhaps displaced as a better word. Now, I can't describe to you how horrible it is to be censored. Censorship is the worst feeling in the world. And honestly, this is the only way I know how to deal with it, is just to screw everyone and just put my stuff out there. And the only way that that is going to do anything is if you folks help me. I need your help spreading my information, spreading my show, spreading the knowledge that I've obtained and that I give freely. It's I, There's really no way else to do this. In this day and age, folks, there's no other way to do this the only thing I can count on is for you to help me share this, for you folks to help me spread the word, help spread the word that I'm still out here, that despite the censorship, the blackballing, the organized weirdness against me, I'm still here. That's really all I can ask of you. And in return, I vow to do another whole season, at least, of Red Bell Sunday School. So how can you help? Well, listen, I hold no copyright claim on these shows. I'm not making any money from them. So there's no law. There's nothing that can stop you from sharing them. You don't need my permission. You have it now. Take these shows. Send them to people. Do whatever you want to do. Make your own video of what I'm saying. Make your own documentary. Put them on a podcast. Any podcast, I don't care, create one. Mirror them to YouTube, mirror them to other sites. Whatever it is that you feel will reach people, do it. Please don't ask me. You don't need to ask me. Just do it. That's how you can help. Share my book. It's free. Again, no permission needed. The link is there for you to download, to send that download link to anyone else you want to. It's free. There is no copyright. Do you understand? I am not in this for the money. I'm in this to reach people. Now the contrarians will say, well, it sounds like you're trying to sell a book. Well, let me tell you what I'm doing to get the, the sacrifices that I'm making. I'm going to try to get an agent, a literary agent, to then try and get my book published. And the only way that I know how to do that is to offer wh whatever agent takes up the, the, the purpose, the cause, to offer whatever agent I get the profits. I'm not going to get profits except maybe enough to eat. I don't want the money to interfere with the truth because that's what money does. So whatever agent I'm going to get, I'm going to offer them three, four, five times what they're going to earn. And in that way, hopefully they will put me up in debates, in public speaking engagements. Okay. You got to understand I'm in this spiritually. I'm not in this materially, right? But the only way to break out of this chasm, this dark hole that we call the alternative truth patriot movement which has no movement at all is to go in that direction i don't want to i don't like it but what else can i do and the only thing i can do is count on you to help me get there and on top of all this i'm already blackballed 
I'm already censored. I'm probably already on the list of do not publish. Again, a horrible feeling, but I gotta try. I gotta do it. I gotta get out there. I've got to do everything I can to break this mold, to break out of this self-contained prison we call the alternative structure, the alternative media. Now, it is certainly not necessary to listen to the almost 50 hours of previous Red Pill Sunday School, although I would certainly recommend it. While season one was certainly a delve into the history, the true history of the United States and the political systems, the law, languages, etc., and of course the Bible. Now that it's been almost two years since I did those shows, I gotta say, folks, we've now gone from a warning to a war. We are at war. We're in a spiritual war, as the Bible says, against principalities. We are in a war that cannot be defined simply, that cannot be simply put into catchphrases. We're in the middle of a spiritual awakening, and I say again that, folks, a spiritual awakening is not something pleasant. If you want to know the truth, if you want to live in truth, that is a very difficult awakening to have. That is a very difficult path to follow. I know that you folks already know that. But what I'm here to say today is that we are at war. This is a war. It's a spiritual war like no other time in history. It cannot be compared to any other time in history. And that's what we need to talk about. Because if we're ever going to see the other side of this war, then we need to wake the hell up. We need to realize what we are, who we are, why we are. We need to understand our place in nature. We need to understand the bounds of the law and laws of nature. We need to start living in truth. Now, that is so easy to say. That sounds like a catchphrase, but it's not. You see, what we're going to be talking about on this show is how religion combined and married with the state, has tricked you, has caused you to call yourself by a name of some religion, and yet never teaching you anything about the book that that religion is supposedly based on. The book that has been declared a law, the common law of the United States, of England, a copyrighted work that is, again, the law, the common law. Once you allow yourself to step outside of the law of nature that is written in the Bible. Now, be clear, the Bible is not the source of the law. The Bible is a book containing that law, divinely inspired and all that. We want to know what the book actually says, whether it is discernible through reason not logic, but reason. Is it spiritually discernible? Now, as far as the show goes, it's going to be uh, without rhyme or reason. It could be a short one like this one, or it could be three or four hours long, or eventually it will be my documentary that I've been working on, which will be about 40 to 50 hours long, strictly on the entirety of the vaccine and medical industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and how that has completely destroyed us, not ironically, just like the Bible instructs us. Although in the Bible, the word pharmacopoeia was translated by the king, or I should say mistransliterated, into the word sorcery. Well, sorcery is pharmacopoeia when translated correctly when the old languages are used. And that is the only way that you can understand what the Bible says. Now, I know one of the reasons that people have steered clear of me is because I started talking about the Bible, because I actually read it. And when I read it, I said, hey, you Christians out there, you're not doing anything according to the Bible. You're doing things according to your religion, which has nothing to do with the Bible. 
I started saying the words God. I defined the word God, which it turns out doesn't mean anything at all. Unless you qualify it, unless you say what that word means, anybody can be a god if you have power over another. They call them magistrates. And it's a word that's used constantly in the Bible to describe men, kings, and people in power. And that gets confused, and people blame God for everything. Well, that's not the God I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one that is defined specifically defined. You see, you don't have a choice to believe or not believe when reading the Bible, that is, what this word means. It was a specific word that had a definition. And you know what I found? And this probably sounds crazy to most people. I found that the biggest problem with religion is that they believe in God. A word that is undefined. An unknown God. Something that great artists have tried to depict. Something outside of nature. Something completely separate. A designer. And generally people think of it, it, him, her, in the artifice or design or we'll say image of man. How arrogant, how completely ignorant can you be to think of God as a man? I mean, (laughs) I I can see a deer thinking that God must be a deer, (laughs) but, or a squirrel, but I, but you're a man, whether you're male or female, you are a man to not know the meaning of the word as used is to completely misunderstand and misinterpret the Bible. Why would anyone not want to know the meanings of the words, the intention of the words used in the Bible, so that when the word God, which is a translation of about 30 different words, archon, theos, which means God-like, so many different words, Elohim, And most importantly, Jehovah. When Jehovah, though, is used, it was actually carried over a few times in the Bible by the king because, of course, it is the only time that the Bible is talking about the one true or living God. The rest of the time, the word is referring to something else. Why would you not want to know that? It's right there in black and white. All the concordances agree. If you read the original words that were in the Bible, they're all different when they refer to the word God. And the king comes along and replaces all words, all these different terms that recognize godliness as the word God or Lord or this, right? These Adonai, they all mean something different. And most of the time they're applied to men acting in as the Pope does or pretends to be in the stead of God, in the stead of Christ. This is what the term God actually means. And so the problem is, with Christians especially, is that the belief in God, when God is not a term that is defined, every Christian I've ever met has a different view and conception of what God is, the form. You see, the substance, forget about it. The church isn't going to teach you that. They only want you to think of form. They want you to think of an idol to worship, not to be a part of it, not to recognize your own place in it, but to worship as as an idol, to, to, to picture it as a thing separate from you, separate from the earth, separate from the universe. That is what religion has done. Because, guess what? The only way that men can be gods is if you take another god before Jehovah. That's the only way the Pope can be the replacement for Christ or God is if you take a man as God. That's what they teach. Now, The second I said, hey, look, folks, Jehovah, Y-H-V-H, 
this term had a meaning. There was a reason that it was used instead of the generic term God. Now, if I heard that for the first time, someone actually could say, look, I found the definition of God. And it's right here. It's what was defined then. It's what it was defined in almost all religions. It's, it's here it is, right here. There it is. You don't have to guess anymore. You don't have to have the image that is put into your mind by Catholicism or other denominations of it called Christianity. You don't have to depend on the artwork of men, the fictions of men, the artifice of men to have the definition, the meaning of the word. And without the meaning of the word God, the whole Bible is useless. Without the meaning of what Jesus Christ is metaphorically supposed to be, the whole Bible is meaningless. And that's why most people turn away from it, hate it, despise it, just like I did. But I'm here to tell you that, folks, <laughs> we're <laughs> this book is everything. This book is the foundation of law. And until that is clear, there will be no spiritual awakening. You see, the Bible is not the story of God. The story of God is the universe. The story of God is creation itself. No man can tell the story of God, but what man can do is tell the story of the law of God, the word of God, as we say it. Now, those two words, word and law, cannot be confused to mean anything but the same thing. The word of God is the law of God. Another word for that is logos. And that's why in the Bible it says, the word was made flesh. It says that the law was made flesh, allegorically speaking of Jesus Christ being the personification in the flesh of the word or law of God. What are we to do? We're to follow the law. The word of God was made flesh. Again, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to follow the word. Once this allegory, once the metaphor, the anthropomorphization, the personification of the law of God, the law of nature, comes into understanding, then everything in the Bible starts making sense. But see, Christianity has idolized, has made Christ into an idol, not something that you follow, something that you worship. And in fact, many people call Jesus Christ God, a huge misnomer. A, a very, very, very incorrect title to put on the Son, i.e. the Word, the Law of God. And that's the kind of thing we're going to be talking about, because if you're going to understand the Law of Nature, you're going to have to understand the Source. And unfortunately, that means you're going to have to give up a lot of beliefs, because belief has no place in truth. Truth and belief are two different things. Truth has no alternative. Truth is truth. There is no secondary or alternative truth. There is only one truth. And that truth is never that which is created by man. And that's very important to understand. One of the hardest things that I had to do in my life was accept the fact that I was a fool, that I was wrong about the Bible. Now, I'm not preaching any kind of religion here. I'm telling you, the Bible is not what you think it is. It's not what you've been entrained to think it is. Why? Because how many times have I read the quote to you folks that a Bible-reading people cannot be enslaved? Why is that a quote in different forms that has been stated so many different times throughout history? by even former slaves like Douglas. Why? Because it's true, folks. Everything that we do in the legal realm is opposed to what the Bible says is law. Now, we're going to clarify some of these things. Some of these things that I've come to understand now, finally, close the argument. Stop any debate. Because it's very clear 
what the Bible says and what we do are completely opposite. And that is why, of course, we are not free. We haven't had a spiritual awakening. And I'll tell you why. Our first show will be about the soul. Now, I've always thought of the soul because of organized religion and because of not reading the Bible or ever defining the term that the soul is some separate part that somehow detaches from the body at the end of life and goes to heaven and da 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 But that's not the case. That's not what the soul and the spirit is in this life. And that's going to be subject number one. Now, we're going to talk about things. We're going to define the new world order, which is not an order in the, in the terms of a Masonic order. You're looking for a group of men who are behind the new world order. No, 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 no. Order is a term that describes a fiction, a reality, a false reality, a secular order. In other words, It's referring to the secular law, the law of man taking over the law of God, the law of nature. And that will be one of our subjects. We're going to be talking about the subject of my upcoming book, Simulacra and Simulation. We're going to be talking about the matrix, what it is, and like the Bible, what it is metaphorically attempting to teach. Now, again... For those who love the movies, you're not going to be happy with my critique of them because they are designed to deceive. They are designed to make you love your servitude, as Aldous Huxley so eloquently stated, that you'll love your servitude, that you'll want to go back into the Matrix, that you want to be the king of the Matrix. You want the secular order because you don't know You simply don't know what spirituality truly is. Intrigued? Well, then stay tuned. Hit subscribe. Go to my Twitter account, hit subscribe. And go to my Facebook account and hit subscribe. As much as I despise these things, you'll be doing me a great service by showing me that in a short time, I have the ability to reach many people. Without that, I will not be able to publish a book. I thank you kindly for listening, and I hope that season number two of Red Pill Sunday School will be just as good as enlightening and enjoyable as the first. Thank you very much for sticking with me all these years, and if you're new to all this, welcome to the war.